Welcome back guys. Today we are going to dig into and build ourselves a temperature sensor or humidity sensor node that sends the data to my MQTT server and then visualize it. I'm going to start to go through a little bit about the tools that I'm going to use and then we build it and then I show you how we integrate it into Node-RED and actually visualize the data itself. Hopefully you like this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button and a big thumbs up. If you want to skip a section, here is the actual timestamps to the different parts of this video. Let's start look at the tools that we need to work on this. A normal snipper is really good to cut the cables, tool to actually strip the wires and I like this one. A couple of screwdrivers of course, those will come in handy when you're working with the cases. It might be that you want a saw or something like that to actually cut the boxes. Uh, depending on if you're using a box like this one here or if you're using a black box like this that they have hard, this one is the soft one. Or if you 3D print one, you might come in handy to actually cut it out. It's also good to have a tool to work with the different to work with those different lugs here. Uh, I do like those to add those on the end of the cables. Of course, a soldering iron is good to have with a very very small fine tip. Uh, I also recommend to have some kind of glue gun because it really comes handy when we talk about gluing things into the boxes so they stick. The sensors I'm going to use for this case here is the SHT21 or HTU21. It's a sensor that do temperature and humidity and it works really really well. I square C. We're also going to use this sensor here. This is the GI49. It also have a couple of other names, of course. This one is a, a light sensor that uh, measures in lux. I square C as well. That makes it possible to stack those two on the same channel. Of course, pin headers is needed as well. Today I'm going to use the ESP-01 because that one I have plenty of. They are really, really small as you can see, and they will fit nicely in the box. The downside with this one is, of course, it does not have a voltage regulator, and it only has two GPIO. Including that, it's a little bit more tricky to actually program compared to any of the ESP12 that have the USB connector. On the other hand, I don't need all these kind of outputs, inputs. To give power to the device, I'm going to use this type of buck converter. This is actually hooked up directly to the mains and give 3.3 volt out on the DC side here. This one actually gives out plenty enough of energy to actually power this ESP01. So this one is really nice addition. The box, as I said earlier, will be either one of these two. Uh, in this case, for this one scenario here, I'm going to use this white box because this will sit besides other white gear. First of all, I'm going to use this ESP01 here and those two sensors and I'm going to connect them up to each other. This one here, I do want to have some kind of header pins. So I'm taking this header pin here and I'm going to put it in and cut it off. See, we need four like something like that. But the reason I do this and not soldering directly on two, I will be soldering the sensors onto it, is because I want to be able to reprogram this one very, very simply. So this is the first step. The sensor for the light itself, this one here, need to be positioned on the top. And as you can see, if you look very closely, they have the same actual wiring diagram. So that's really good. So let's start with this one, and this one will be soldered like that. And then we take the next one and stack that one on top, just barely so it reaches down. And then we cross check so the distance between them aren't too little, because the temperature sensor needs to be have some headroom, so we bend it out a little bit like that. And then we solder the rest of them. And 
that looks fine the ESP as well so let's hook them up to get there the neat thing here is that the pinout actually matches like that but you cannot put them this close together because this CPU here it actually produces a lot of heat unless you go into deep sleep mode and I'm not going to do that since I want the OTA be available so I need to have some wiring between here and this tool is really really handy and of course V in is red and that goes to the top here and then we have the black one that is the next one here green one the yellow one and we will take this one here first I just heat up those tops adding a little bit of solder makes it a little bit easier to solder them and I'm also going to take this one and that one as I said before this one fits nicely over like that so let's start with the yellow one add it to this pin let's see what I'm doing and then we take the green one Then we take the black one and connect it to ground on the ESP1. And then we're going to take the red one and attach it to this one here. That is the power. And we have the first part done. The thing is on this end here, we're not going to use everyone. So we can actually remove that one. Oh, sorry. We can remove, remove that one. We can also remove that one, that one, and that one, and that one. Those two need to be connected together. That's the power. And this one here is the ground. I bend it inwards. So now we need to thin them, thin them up a little bit in preparation. The red one goes to that, those two that are hooked together, and the black one goes here. This rig is of course not for programming, so you know that. The programming part will be taken care of by the serial adapter, but this is at least the start. And we added all, everything up, we're going to take a glue gun and add some hot glue to it to protect everything. And we are going to glue this end as well. And we have the ESP done and the sensor done. So let's hook up the electronics for powering this. As said earlier, I'm going to use this high link uh, AC input and output is DC. So on the AC side, I need to connect two wires and I need to connect the wires from the ESP towards that side there. So first of all, I do recommend to add a capacitor on this side. It actually makes the output a little bit smoother in terms of ripple. You have a little bit of a buffer. Just make sure that you connect to the right side. And the positive is on that side. So I twist them around. And add some solder. Let's pre teen those as well. And I cut the extra ball away. Then we have those here. Negative. Still. And some, a little bit of hot glue or snot. This is just to hold it together. This one doesn't get any direct warmth from it when you run it. 
because this one pulls, I don't know, a half a watt or something like that. Um, and it's pretty efficient, this buck converter. Next part is to actually add the AC side. And to do that, I'm using a little bit thicker wire, uh, 0.75 or 0.5 or something like that. So let me cut that up. <coughs> Remove that away. A little bit longer on one side because we are going to have the ferrules on that one. A little bit shorter on the other side because that one is going to be soldered. And the ferrules are really nice if you're going to screw this in somewhere later on. Like that. And you take the tool and you crimp it and you end up with that. Do the next one, and you're done. What we need now is some heat shrink. When that's done, heat gun. And this is basically the whole unit. AC in, DC out, ESP and two sensors. Of course, you need to make sure that you have a fuse here. Don't forget that and follow your regulations in your country. In my case, I have a fuse on the other side of this terminal. Let's remove that one for now. And I'm actually going to glue that one like that because I want this one to stick firmly. So let's add some glue. Now someone might complain that you don't use hot glue for this kind of things, but it actually works pretty good in this kind of scenario. The AC side is here, and if I need to connect it up to something, I have this one here. Depending on holes and everything goes in, you will either cut hole in the side or in the bottom. Now I will leave that out for now. What's important now to understand is that this one gets hot, and the sensor needs to stay outside. So we're actually going to mount it outside like that. To do that, I will take one of these and I will cut a hole in it. And I'm going to cut it like that. So we get a groove like so. And that will make it possible to have this one on the outside. Like that. This is not the prettiest to have the sensor outside looking like this, but my tips is actually to add, if you need something outside, you can add a globe or something protecting it. The sensor itself should generally be built inside, but let's do it like this. And I'm going to add a couple of hot snots on it, on the inside. When that's in place, we will fit this back Something like that. There we go. This one here you need to be a little bit careful with. It should not come close to the AC side, so try to keep it on the other side. You have a back side here, you can potentially glue it somewhere if you want to do that. Um, I generally try to stick mine in the other end uh, and add some hot glue so it stays something like so. This side here can be kept with this one or you add another clip and I'm generally adding another clip in this end here with the fuse in line as well. When that's done the lid goes on and you install it. But before we do this we need to program this ESP. Programming the ESP01 can be a little bit tricky. First of all I'm going to use a normal serial adapter where I actually hooked up all the pins to the ESP itself in a socket like this, but I also added up a switch to put the ESP in a boat loader mode so I can put in the stuff I need. Of course, I have an extra capacitor, and the capacitor is needed because the serial adapter cannot power this ESP during full load. As you can see, I have more wires going around, and that's because this is my testing rig actually can contain other stuff to the GPIO. 
those we can skip for now. This ESP is not the one that I'm going to program because this one does not have the actual uh, sensor on itself. If you remember earlier, you saw me actually having this header here. And the reason for that is because I can remove this header and put it into this one here. But before I do that, I need to make sure that my switch actually is switched to boatload mode. And then I put it in. Now you can see that it actually started because the red light is glowing. So let's head over to the computer, download the software and program this thing. So let's head over to the computer. As you can see here, I have opened GitHub and I'm browsing to my space and I'm going to the temp Hume Light ESP01 project. If we take a quick look at the code itself, there is a configuration in the beginning showing uh, the type of sensors that I'm using, the support that we have. And if you go down, you need to make sure that you actually set up the wireless SSID. You also need to configure MQTT server, the username, the password. And depending on your structure, you can also set the topics that MQTT will send out to. If you want to know the pins that you have designed here, or if you want to change that, you have that here. Wire begin 0 and 2. So what you do is to actually download this repository, get into your computer, and then you open up Arduino Studio. After opening this up in Arduino Studio, you need to do a couple of things unless you already have done it. First of all, make sure that you choose the card that is the ESP8266 generic. If you don't have that one, you need to install it by the card handler. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, I suggest you Google for it because I'm not going to show you that today. The flash mode should be DIO and you should select the flash size of your ESP. Try to get the ESP01 with the 1 megabyte fl flash size. If you choose the one with half a meg, you won't be able to use your OTA. The port itself that you choose should be the port that this serial port is attached to. In my case, it's COM5. When that's done, you need to cross-check all the libraries that I have used here. Every one of those do exist in the library management system itself. So if you search for them here, you will be able to find them. Install them. And then you can go ahead and compile this sketch. And if everything goes well, this is the output you should get. It's now time to do the programming. And if your wiring to the ESP01 is correct, this should not be a problem at all. So let's press upload and see what happens. As you can see down here, it's now programming the ESP. And the one I have is one megabyte. The upload is now done. I now need to release the switch so the ESP actually starts up. But before I do that, let's open up the serial console. So go to Tools and Serial Monitor. Make sure that the baud rate is 115200. Then you re release the switch so the ESP can start up. And when it starts up, if you look at the serial console, this is what you will see. You will see that it connects, it gets an IP address, it's configuring the OTA service, the MQTT servers, and connect, and it's up and running. It finds the sensors, and then it's actually starting to send the data itself. If all this is ready, it's now time to look at the data received. I'm using MQTT Explorer, it's a nice little tool for Windows. And I named this ESP Wind. And as you can see here, I am getting values here all the time, roughly every fifth second. If you want, you can always change this to the time that you want, but I currently want it very often to be sent. So let's head over to Node Red. This dash you can see here is one that I have made earlier. This dashboard here contains a little bit different values. I, for instance, measure the CO2 value and I do humidity, lux and temperature. Today I'm going to show you how we can configure something like the test here in the right corner. 
So let's head over to Node-RED configuration. Node-RED configuration when it comes to this is very, very simple. Uh, what we are going to look into today is the one that we have here. First of all, you need to have the MQTT palette. When you have that configured to your host itself, in my case, I'm running the Mosquito broker on the local host. You actually need to set up the topic that we are going to listen to. My topic here, if we, let's configure this one, copy and paste it, and we get the new one here. In my case, it was called ESP dash wind and I'm going to copy that part paste it in to everyone like that then we go to the UI itself and yeah let me put it in a test but let let's call this one wind as well wind temp wind humidity humidity wind lux and we then deploy it let's head back to the UI and you can see that it's updated here so now we have the wind temperature. So if I hold on the sensor, you will see that that one should be racing. As you can see, 22.13. And you have the lux for the wind and the humidity. So those actually work really, really great. I will give you all the code for this one here for free as well, so you can find that in the description. The code as you saw earlier is already up on GitHub, so you can download and play with it as you want. A quick drawing will also, put up, will also be put up under this page here, including some more extra details on how to wire it. So guys, big thanks for watching this video. I hope you learn something. Um, this is one of my simpler nodes that I am running at home and I have many of them. They are very simple to build, very cheap to build. They doesn't cost much either. So hopefully you can build one yourself and if you have any questions feel free to put them down below. If you have any comments or suggestions on what you want to see don't forget to put them down below as well. And don't forget to actually subscribe to my channel. Um, because then you will actually be notified if you press the bell every time I upload a new video. Thanks guys and I see you in the next video. Bye.